Hi, this is Todd Baker, your certified mortgage planner, and I'm here with our investor, Jake Baxter from ARC Mortgage, and they do what it's called non-qualified mortgages for us. And what non-qualified mortgage is the technical term, but what that really means is mortgages that don't fit into Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or government loans, such as bank statements and 1099s, asset depletion, those kind of loans. So this video is going to focus on the 1099 qualification. So 1099 would be any independent contractor. Most of you real estate agents are going to be 1099. And you, you guys will either file that on a Schedule C or an LLC. And many people in the sales world, there's many, many people out there that are 1099. And the problem with going with a conventional or government loan with those is that the 1099 goes on the top line of usually a Schedule C, or sometimes if you're a realtor and you're doing a lot of, in, you have a, a significant income, you might have an LLC, but then you deduct all of your expenses. And by the time you get to the net income and then average it for two years, it's usually significantly less in terms of what you qualify for than what you can actually afford. And so for those type folks, we have this 1099 program. And it, so we're gonna talk about that. So Jake, tell us about the 1099 program. Sure, Todd, I mean, you did a beautiful job of explaining it yourself. Um, we'll dive in a little bit about the calculation behind it. How about that? So yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get either the most recent year, or recent two years of 1099 forms, and I'll divide that by 12 or 24 months. And I'll take 90% of the income that's reported on that 1099 form. Now, remember, you said oftentimes that top line of the Schedule C or a business return, that's great. That shows your gross income what what did you bring in in revenue that year but then once you start taking out all those expenses it may not net the net result may not end up where we need it to be from a mortgage standpoint well, we've kind of simplified things we just take 10 percent off that com top number and that's the income that we use to qualify your borrowers uh for, for the next mortgage right and so and so the other thing is and i know we've spoke about this is that for a bank statement loan, this is important because a lot of you out there will have heard about bank statement loans, but there's an advantage that on a bank statement loan, what the folks that do bank statement loans have an expense rating, usually it's per industry, and there's a maximum amount you can take off the bank statement. And I know it's higher on the 1099, right? So there's that one. And then the other thing is that even though there's bank statements, it still gets underwritten. You're still, in other words, you still have to have an ability to repay, and there is there are standards for underwriting. These are not subprime loans; they're they're alternative documentation loans. And so, what happens is is that I've seen where like the deposits are great until you start saying, "Hey, we have to get rid of this deposit and that deposit." And it's a mess because you're looking at sometimes many, many, many bank statements. So, comment a little about about all that. Yeah, these first of all, these are definitely not subprime loans. These are High qualified borrowers oftentimes have high FICO scores, skin in the game by way of down payment. Uh, so these are far different than what we've seen in, in times past. Um, but yeah, think about it. When we look at bank statements, my underwriting team can see line by line, in flow, outflow of that bank statement. And it's just a ton of documentation uh, to look through. The expense factors that we use range from 20 to 60%. So yeah, we may take all of those deposits, add them up, but we're gonna haircut that to account for some type of expense related to your business. So I could cut, depending on the business, I could cut it down by as much as 60%, or I can just look at a 1099, one piece of paper, I take 90% of that and call it a day. So it's a much more aggressive income calculation, and it's much more simple uh, for your borrowers to, to track down the documentation because it's it's a lot less pieces of yeah, paper. Yeah, it's one piece of paper. The day. Well, and, so, and so on the 1099, you use 90% of that. And then the other thing too is it's not uncommon for a lot of people to have, like I have one now that we're looking at where they had like one year had X amount of dollars, and then the next year it ramped up. And then this third year, he's really ramped up to where his base should even continue to grow. And he's already started out the year pacing of what he did last year, and that's his forecast. So it's much 
more favorable to him to do a one year 1099 because it's more realistic of where his actual income is and he can afford something like he can actually afford today, not based on, you know, early performance of this career he started, correct? That's a that's one of the advantages, right? That's absolutely right. Yeah, we can take a look at the most recent year or two years. So if it's a situation where he significantly, he or she has significantly ramped up, we want to take the more recent year. That's absolutely an option. And then does, is there an adjustment to the interest rate if you go one year versus two year? There is, but it's slight. You know, I've tried to avoid interest rate because it, that could change. You know, what what is, uh, in fact, today, which, you know, you're looking at an eight to point or to a quarter in rate difference, yeah, um, so that minimum. could change tomorrow. So there's it's a, minimal, minimal, yeah, a minimal, minimal change of interest rate, which means minimal change in payment, but big deal if it maybe doubles your purchasing power, right? So th absolutely. The big takeaway for the realtors and builders, this is who we're targeting with this. This is information for you, for you, for your sales reps is that when you have somebody that needs to go alternative documentation and they talk about bank statements, make sure you're saying, Hey, are you 1099? And also make sure you're getting them over to us so that we can take a look at it and get them into the right program. So Jake, thanks so much. Hope you guys all found this helpful and uh, talk to you all real soon. Thanks, Todd.